Good morning. This is the Wilcox Truck Stop Ministry, and I'm Mark Hopkins. <coughs> I'm the assistant pastor at Extended Hands Ministries, and uh, I'm, I'm spelling Gus today, and Brother Pastor Gus, because he's en route somewhere, and we're going to pray for Gus right now. We're going to open in prayer for Gus. So, Father, we just come to you and thank you for your love and your power and your focus on those of us whom you created. And Father, we just want to lift up Gus today. He's uh, en route to Sturgis today uh, to minister. I want to just praise you and thank you for his protection in every way and for that special anointing you've put on him. That <coughs> every situation he goes into, that he will, he will receive your power and your wisdom and your words and your love to minister and to do the things he's called to do. So we thank you for Gus, and we thank you for your hand upon him. And we thank you for this time together today to explore your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, uh, as I've been spending time with the Lord lately, he, and it's been for a little while now, he's been telling me, Mark, foundational, foundational things. Go back to the basics. Because I think even for those of us who've studied the Bible for three or four decades, <laughs> we sometimes forget the, the simple things, the, the, the foundational things that, that we can stand anything else on. And so that's why at Extended Hands, he's got me teaching a series that started out so far, but it, he told me that it's the foundation of the foundation, which is the love of God, understanding and knowing God's love for us and that so that can turn into us loving him back so that can turn into us loving each other the body and that's how the world gets attracted by the word says you know they will they will know that we are his by our love for one another right and if you want anything want to hear any of that that's on the website for extended hands ministry and I've done one part and there's more to come and there's more to be built on that. And it's all foundational stuff. But today, uh, he put it on my heart to talk about a different foundation. There's a few things in the Word of God that we really, really need to understand so we can understand the Word of God and we can understand the nature of God. And one of those things today, and hopefully... Don't just turn off and go, oh, I heard that, I know that. But I'm, I'm going to talk about spirit, soul, and body today. But there's, but it's important that we really understand it and, and function in it and live it. Because if it's just an idea in our minds, it doesn't do us much good, right? But if it's something that's deep within us, understanding what the Word of God says, what God says about spirit, soul, and body. For me, you know, I've studied the Bible, like I said, for 35 plus years. And when I finally got the understanding of spirit, soul, and body, that I'm a spirit who has a soul, who lives in a body, and how that pertains to the Word of God, the Word of God just opened up to me. I mean, things became understandable, that the hard things, things that were like, I don't know what this means, Father. <laughs> you know? And and it 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 makes such a difference. Because what really happens in the Word of God is sometimes the Word of God is talking about your spirit or the Holy Spirit within you and your spirit. Or sometimes the Word of God is talking about your soul realm, your mind your emotions, your will, what you choose to think, how you choose to feel, and what you choose to do, right? Or sometimes the Word of God is talking about your body, your flesh, and, and the lusts thereof, right? Or the, the path. And there's a war that goes on between the spirit and the flesh. The Bible tells us that. So 
we really need to, so I think I'm gonna at least start to establish maybe maybe a little better understanding today and maybe, but hopefully we'll all see where this leads some places that we don't normally think of. So we're gonna start out with uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter five, verse 23. Turn there. That's in the New Testament, right? Yeah. Just kidding. Between Genesis and Revelations. What's that? Between Genesis and Revelations. Yeah, yeah, somewhere there. You know, we need to have a sense of humor. You know, when I preach it. Uh, Stay hands, I always give a fun. I'm not doing that here today. We have a very short period of time. But just, just have, you know, lighten up. God's got a sense of humor. You know that, right? And, and <laughs> the joy of the Lord is our strength. We need to have joy. And joy mostly comes from when we realize how much He cares for us, but how much He loves us, right? Okay, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify, that means separate you, right? You separate from the world or something, or anything that's not God or his word, which is one and the same, to, and, and move toward him, right? Sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ now and this is just one scripture there's plenty others that separate this these out but many in the church have put spirit and soul together like they're one thing and they're not now our soul who we are, our personality, our mind, emotions, and will, will always be a, attached to our spirit. Always be a part of it. You know, here on this earth, when we go home to heaven, our, our soul will always exist and always be a part of who we are. But the eternal part of us, the forever part of us, is our spirit. Because we're made in the image of God, and God is a spirit, Amen. and we're made a spirit, Amen. a forever spirit. Heaven or hell, we're a forever spirit, right? Yes. And on this earth, we're a forever spirit. And if we're born again, we're a live spirit now, not a dead spirit. Because in the word of God, alive and dead is just whether we're separated from God or not. And we're going to get into that. We're going to do a little bit of scripture there. So God made us three-part beings. The word of God is very clear on that. Spirit, soul, and body. So God made us in his image. That's in Genesis 1.26. We don't need to go there. But if you need to know where that is, that's in Genesis 1.26. You know what is going on with your mind, emotions, and decisions? Okay. All of us... We know what's going on with our body. If we have pain, we know we have pain, right? If we feel good, we know we feel good. We're in touch with that for the most part, right? Our body tells us, right? If, if I'm hungry, if I have to have a bodily function, whatever it is, I'm just being real with you, right? We know what I, what's going on with our flesh. If we have numbness, if we have, you know, I could talk about a lot of things. But we're in touch with our flesh, our body, in this world. In fact, we have to have one to live on this planet. This is why spirits seek a body, scripturally speaking, right? Even evil spirits and things. Because you can't function without a body. Even the herd of pigs that Jesus cast the, the legion of demons into, they ran down and jumped in the ocean, 
because they didn't want all those evil spirits in there. But they sought a body. They got out of a man and went to pit. And I don't want to go down that road too far, but just know that this is a spiritual truth. So let's talk about our soul just for a little bit. We generally, usually, now sometimes we get so caught up in something, we're not paying a lot of attention to it, but we know what's going on in our soul. All of us know what we're thinking about, right? We know what's going on in our, in our human mind, right? Now, by the way, the Bible very clearly says when we're born again, we get, among other things, among a lot of wonderful things, we get the mind of Christ, right? But that mind is in the spirit, not in the body and the flesh. There is a difference. And one needs to transcend or take over the other. But that's a choice we walk toward or away from, right? But we know what's going on in our human mind, mm -hmm. right? At any time. We know what we're thinking about. Good, bad, or ugly, we know what we're thinking about. And our emotions. We might let our emotions get out of control, but we know where they're going, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm having shame or guilt or anger or depression, sadness, um, joy, uh, whatever it is, we know what's going on in our emotions. So we're in, right? Mm -hmm. And we know what our decisions are too, our will. We know the things we might like to do. We know the things we are doing. We know the things we've decided not to do. Actions of all kinds, right? Whether to even read the Bible or turn toward God. We know what's going on there. We're in touch with our soul realm and we're in touch with our body. We just are. We're used to functioning that way. Right? We're created a three-part being. The part we're not used to is the spirit. It's a mystery to us. We, we can't just go, okay, what exactly is happening in my spirit? Because it's, it has nothing to do with how we feel. It has nothing to do with, with any of those soul realm or body functions. Making sense to you? So we, we need to find out, well, how do we know what's going on in our spirit? Then? So, let's look at John chapter 6, 63. John 6, 63, the Gospel of John. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. I just said that earlier. The Holy Spirit, when we're born again, what happens is the Holy Spirit moved in. We invited Jesus, and the Holy Spirit came, right? Because the Father, the Son, the Spirit, they are one. Three persons, one God. The, the Holy Spirit moved in, and made our spirit, became permanently one with our spirit and made our spirit alive. Some versions say quickened, but that means alive. So what that means is in scriptural, that means instead of being separated from God, it made us one with God. God literally moved in all his wisdom, all his power, all his all the fruit of the Holy Spirit, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we, in, in our spirit, we became complete and perfect and just like Jesus. Amen. This is scriptural truth. But, the, but we don't, when we're born again, we, you know, we're all happy because we just came to Jesus, right? But our soul, our mind, emotions, and will and our body didn't change. That's going to be a process. All of those things, our soul realm and our body, are going to be a process. Is this helping you? Yes. So, let me see if I missed anything here. 
It is the Spirit who gives life that's in our spirit. Our spirit came alive to God. One with God. That's what saved us. That's what gave us his righteousness. That's what keeps us out of hell. But, but so much of so many Christians we focus on well when I die and go to heaven and that's fine that's amazingly wonderful we're going to live forever in heaven with God but we, we already started the forever we already started this life this oneness with God but are we reaping the benefits of that and we can't even start the process of our mind, our emotions, our will, and our flesh, our body, moving toward what all this wonderful stuff that was put in our spirit with the Holy Spirit there until we understand what's going on and how this works, okay? The words that I, this is Jesus speaking, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So his words, the word scriptural, scripture, it gives us its spirit. It empowers what's already in our spirit and gives us more and more life. He said he came to give us life, life more abundantly. But it doesn't happen in our soul and our body immediately. That's a process. That's a walk. Making sense? Mm -hmm. And, then, and it, when we really start to understand this, we begin to, and we read scripture, it should open up a lot of scripture to us. It opens a, up a lot of things that God is saying, or the demand of God whom God spoke through and had to write it down in the word, start to make more and more sense. This is why this is one of the most foundational things, along with understanding who God really is and how his nature is and is understanding who he created us to be and how we operate and and you know I try to teach this a lot and it's because it's so foundationally important to really opening up a powerful walk with God a, a genuinely intimate close walk with God and you know we, tr we, need to, we need to keep it simple, right? Keep it simple, Satan, right? Okay. Um, so it's a spirit. Our spirit is the part that's reborn, that's born again. Not our mind, not our emotions, not our will, our decisions and actions, right? Does it make sense? Okay. Okay, so the Spirit's what came alive, and God's Word is the, is the only way to see what's going on in your spirit. In fact, let's go to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, right, he is a new creation. We are a new creation to begin with only in our spirit, only in that forever part of us. That's what changed. It became complete and whole, just like Jesus. But old things have passed away. See, the old things passed away only in our spirit. We're, we could still think the, the wrong thoughts, right? <laughs> I could use a lot of, you know, a lot of words, but, and, and you know what? I'm not just focused on necessarily, you know, the ugly, dirty things that we can think or, or choose to do and stuff. Well, and that's important too. But really it's our whole thought process the images we have of who we are, who God is, and and the, how we should be thinking, biblically, scripturally thinking, thinking, and.
and that's what should be creating the images in our mind, that's how we start that process of lining our soul up and our body up with what happened already like that in our spirit. Is this making sense to you? Yes, sir. It's, yes, sir. it's, it's, we get confused because we're three parts and we got to understand where the, what the differences are and how, how to operate. So, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things became new in our spirit, joined with the Holy Spirit. Okay? You see how understanding this begins to open up Scripture mm -hmm. and help us really understand what the Word of God is saying to us? can be really confusing if we try to apply that verse to stupid going on in our minds <laughs> or crazy going on in our emotions right. or ridiculousness going on in our actions, right? Yeah. And, and so it makes sense when we understand this happens in the spirit, okay? Try to make this simple, foundational, because if we get this, then we can start to just walk this walk with God that makes this change. Makes all the, the anything we have going on in our mind or our emotions or whatever, or our choices that are not lined up with God and his word. Make sense? Because so many of us, we try to make these changes in our flesh or our mind or our emotions without the Holy Spirit yeah. And even as born again Christians, we could try to do that. But there's all this power of God within us. And we need to learn to just let that flow, receive that from the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Starting to help you a little bit? I'm going to watch the time. As I got into this, I'm going, well, this could be a 20 sermon series, but <laughs> we're just going to start out at the basics here and go. So, uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans 8, and we're going to go to verses 9 through 11. Verse 9. Romans 8 and 9. But you are not in the flesh, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. The real you and I born again is in the spirit. All right? Yes. Yes, we're still lugging, lugging this necessary body around so we can survive, breathe, and have a heartbeat and all of that in this earth, right? But we are now a joined to God forever with God, everything that is God, the power of God within us being, that's who we really are, and when we until we start to see ourselves that way think of ourselves that way speak of ourselves that way and function that way act that way not forcing it by our power but in him by his power the changes they start to they start to pick up steam, right? But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, right? We have to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, and then this happens, <coughs> and it has to really happen. That has to be what we believe, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Right? The Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father and the Spirit of Jesus the Christ. In fact, Christ is his anointing, is Jesus and his anointing. The anointed one and his anointing. That's what Christ means. And or Messiah or Messiah, right? It it means an anointing is the Holy Spirit. The Spirit, okay? Verse 10. And if Christ is in you. The body is dead because of sin. Now our flesh is living and breathing, or I couldn't be talking to you, 
right now, right? Either gone home or somewhere. And home being heaven to those of us who believe. But uh, I realize I'm talking to an online audience as well here. But, but the spirit of life is because of righteousness. The spirit is life because of righteousness. Okay, Jesus' righteousness, he paid for it, gave it to us, right? And that, that simply means right standing with God. No matter what kind of ugly is going on or stupid is going on here or here or here, we are right with God because we've accepted him, right? And we have to understand that. that that's who we, the, the, the part of us that's who we really are, our spirit, that's what's right with God. That's what counts, right? Now we want to get the rest of it in line, but that's a process. Remember, that's a process. And the process starts with understanding that that right standing with God, that righteousness, holiness, and everything else that we are in our spirit, joined with the Holy Spirit, is that's true. And if we if we see our if we identify with the soul realm instead of the spirit, we're going to think wrong, and we're going to we're going to walk around and not be able to function in the power of God. Does, does that make sense? Okay. Um, where are we at? Right, Eleven. Okay. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the Holy Spirit is what is the one who raised Jesus from the dead, right? He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. All that power, all that, the one who is greater than he is, he who is in the world, right? God in us can, can change our bodies. Not just give them life to go to heaven, but give them life and healing. And, you know, in fact, at the cross, sins were forgiven and the, and the product of sin, which is disease and sickness and infirmity and problems with our fleshly body were also paid for. Mm -hmm. Another whole set of sermons, but this is true. And, but understanding, part of the process of getting this, that power out into our body is understanding who we really are. And that the healing is in our spirit. It can get to our mind. The mind of Christ can get to our mind Right? Those images from the word can become our image. Those emotions from the word can become our emotions. Those actions from the word can become, become our actions. And all that healing and all that power can go to our flesh. But we have to understand who we are first and learn that we receive it out of our spirit already within us. Making sense? When we understand these things, the Word of God starts to make sense. Okay. Let me check where we are. Okay. Um, you know, in the rest of this chapter, we're not going to go there, but the rest of this chapter starts speaking about living by our new spirit, which will force our mind, will, and emotions and our flesh to obey. A lot of times... You know, I'm just going to read it real quick. Don't put it up. Just some of it I'm going to read to you so you can start to see it. Because so many times scripture has only been received as pertaining to what will happen when we die and go to heaven. But if we understand spirit, soul, and body, we start to see it also pertains to now that we're an eternal, alive spirit. Okay? Uh, I'm just going to read several verses here. 
Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. That, that doesn't mean necessarily going around doing open sin. That means wrong thinking, wrong feeling based on what's the world or what we're taught that is not scriptural. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Did you catch that? Um, so this, this is powerful for right now while we're still on this planet. Okay? For if you live according to the flesh, you will die, but if the Spirit, if by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. See, fear, fear should have no place in us. Fear of anything. Fear of death. Fear of shame, guilt. Fear of what people think of us. We should know what God thinks of us. He made us right with him. He loves us no matter what. Done deal. Because he is love. He can't do anything else. So he's for us, not against us. And bondage again to fear. But you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. That's why I call God the Father, Abba. It's, it's deep intimacy with him. Oh, thank you, Abba. That you made me alive to you forever. And that's who I am. That's who you are. Yeah. That's who you are. That's who he made you to be. See, we, we, we have to never let go of that. Never let go of that. Okay. I'm going to finish a couple of scriptures. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. But that glory is already in us. And it doesn't have to wait for heaven to be revealed in our mind, emotions, will, and our bodies. Because it's already there. It's already trying to burst out into the rest of our two parts. Right? But we first have to realize our who our number one part is, our spirit, right? And, and how fulfilled and complete and powerful that already is. All the healing, all the joy, all of the, the amazing everything of God that the Word says, all the promises of God are already there. Okay? We're going to move on to... Uh, uh, let's go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians 2. And we're going to go to uh, verse, verse 6 to 10. Colossians 2, verses 6 to 10. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. We're talking about that walk. How that walk really occurs. Not something we try to muster up in our in our soul realm or our body but that we receive from the power of our spirit which, who's inside of us in him we're in him and he is in us right verse 7 rooted and built up in him and established in the faith see we have the faith of God in our spirit the faith of God himself already in our spirit In the faith, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. We have all this thanksgiving in us if we'll let it out. Right? You know, God is voice activated. He created everything by speaking it out. And you're made in his image. And just being thankful out loud to God is powerful it will change your soul realm and your body realm making sense 
Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit. See, this is all the ideas of the world, or sometimes the ideas of the church that are not necessarily scriptural, or sometimes half thoughts that aren't fully measured out, right? We're trying to keep from doing that. Through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men. See, these things become tradition. So much of religion becomes a tradition, and then we have to be careful. We have to go go back and go, is this actually scripturally based, or is this something we've just repeated to each other for generations, sometimes for centuries? Mm -hmm. And it can affect us. It can affect us adversely. It can make it so our mind, emotions, and will, and our flesh don't progress toward what God placed in our spirit forever. Making sense? Am I making this simple? Yes. I hope so. Um, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. See? Basic principles of the world and Christ. Um, two more verses here. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. See, I've been telling you that. There it is. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Father in us. And we're complete. Because he's complete. He's in us. We're complete in him. Okay. Hallelujah. Uh, where was I? Um, who is the head of all principality and power? Okay. I think I'm going to leave it right there. And I'm going to come back and work on this some more with you. So we thank you, Father. We praise you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen.